Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard for Mushroom Wonderland. I'm the vice president of the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. This is my dog, Gunner. We come out into the woods and discover what kind of wild mushrooms are growing out here. So today it's this rainy autumn day in the beginning of November in 2023. And me and Gunner are gonna head out into this patch of forest that I love so much. Ton of mushrooms. Come with me and Gunner on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Mushroom Wonderland. So first things first, as you might notice, it is raining out and it's like this in the fall in the Pacific Northwest. If you're gonna be out hunting for mushrooms, you should definitely be prepared. Invest in some good rain gear, some good muck boots. I'm so cozy and warm right now. I'm in my own little shelter. It makes mushroom picking a lot more fun when you're not soaking wet. And trust me, just like going 20 feet into these bushes looking for good mushrooms, you will be drenched unless you're wearing some rain gear like this. All right, as me and Gunner head into these woods, what we're looking for is this kind of brush, you know, around here we have a lot of this salal. We also have a lot of this evergreen black uh, huckleberry. And you gotta have these big conifer trees, right? Douglas fir and western hemlock. These are the two dominant trees, both really, really um, good friends with the mushrooms and so the mushrooms grow in association with these kind of trees when the tree canopy is thick enough It starts to create this kind of habitat that is good for these lower shrubs and where you find these lower shrubs is where you usually find Chanterelle mushrooms or mushrooms in the genus Cantharellus Here in the Pacific Northwest Cantharellus formosus is what we're looking for and that's the beautiful chanterelle in Latin and it's very bright gold so it's pretty easy to spot when you're walking along which makes it really fun and easy to pick and really easy to identify so I'm almost sure we're gonna come across some let's just keep going up this trail into the dark rainy forest see back here oh lord yeah baby here we go here we go check this out you guys first one we found check this one out let me get way under here two of them beautiful golden chanterelles so yeah they look a little bit beat up sometimes but you look at the underneath, you can tell these are just super fresh. These are gorgeous. And so now I'm down on my knees. I'm here in the needle duff, kind of looking under the bushes. And I'm seeing chanterelles around here. So I, I, I've entered a patch. We call it a patch of chanterelles. This is, uh, you know, because there's a big mycelium underneath me. And it's producing these fruiting bodies. That mycelium is attached to the trees around here. Beautiful. Gonna take those with. All right. It's an interesting looking forest back here. Look at this place. This is some Grimm's Brothers back here, man. Look at this. This is the home of the Bigfoot. This is where Bigfoot chills. Up here in these thick forests where you can hide. Something caught my eye over here. Let's check this out. Oh, it's a beauty. It's a beauty. 
Oh, it's like a flower in the forest. Look at this beautiful chanterelle. Very nice. Oh, I see a little flash of orange. What do we got right down here? A little bit of gold and orange popping up through the forest floor. You guys see that? That color is pretty unmistakable to me. Oh, look at that. A beautiful, freshy little golden chanterelle. Yeah, this is what everybody's looking for. It's been a weird chanterelle season, but I've been telling people hang in there. I have a feeling they're going to come up kind of late. And here we go. This is like a day or two old. Look at this. Another one. Look at those. Primo, baby. So whenever you find one, you'll usually find more. There's a little, little mycorrhizae, a little mycelium living in the ground right here. And it's producing some fruiting bodies. But these are really easy to identify. Really bright orange. Decurrent gills. See how the gills run down the stem like that. And uh, they've got a really fresh, fruity kind of smell. A lot of people say it smells like apricots. I don't know. I feel like that might be like a color association thing, but they sure do look kind of like apricots and uh, they're really easy to identify. Beautiful. I, unfortunately, am allergic to them, but I like to pick them for my family. Everybody else likes them and gets to eat them. But nice. Pacific Golden Chanterelles, Cantharellus formosus. This one is a really, really, probably the most highly sought after um, wild edible mushroom in the Northwest because it's so easy to ID, so. All right, so here we go. I got this mesh foraging bag. You know, it's like a net and it's got a little bag for a knife or whatever. Sometimes I'll put a different species of mushrooms in the little pouch. And some people, you know, I've even heard good mycologists kind of skeptical about the effectiveness of the net bag. But hey, you know, net bags, baskets, things that could potentially drop spores, why not? You know what I mean? Why not increase the chance? Especially when this rain starts getting these kind of wet. It's going to be just dripping spores all over the forest floor here. So that can't be a bad thing. But one thing about this bag is that it can get heavy with wet mushrooms. And then they'll start smushing each other. So one thing you could do is just take a couple of twigs and stuff them in the bottom. And make it kind of a rigid thing like a basket. I've done that before and it's pretty easy. I'll put a link to an Amazon product of this and a foraging knife together this one viler sky this guy gave me this free if i gave him a shout out but go through my link in the description get a foraging bag and a knife it's like 25 bucks or something for both really cool deal and uh you'll be a pro picker so Some people swear by cutting them. I'm convinced it makes no difference. But look at this, back here's another. So we're in golden chanterelle country, which is a nice sign, man. It's been a weird year for them. Nice. So, shaped a little different. This one growing next to an inosibi. That's a chanterelle, though. It looks a little different, but you can tell by the decurrent veins or ridges or gills or whatever you want to call them. We got another one right here. Oh, and another one. Let me set those down. Another one hiding right in here. You see these? Look at those guys. They were really, really disguised in the leaves there. So there we go. These are nice little buttons. Oh, look at that, another one here. These are beautiful little buttons. So, this is what I would call primo, like just primo chanterelles. Really clean and young. You can jump over to mushroom-wonderland.com and get you some merch. You can get hats and shirts and hoodies, coffee mugs, help support the channel. If you love what I'm doing here and you like mushrooms and you love the idea of Mushroom Wonderland and all of our whimsical uh, designs over there. Come check them out, mushroom-wonderland.com. Let's get back to walking. Now my eye is a little bit trained, but I glance into the bushes and I can see this gold color back there. You see that? That catches my eye. We're going in, all right? This is the purpose of wearing this rain gear. 
Because you got to get in here sometimes. Look at these. Look at these chanterelles. Right? This is what you want. Wow. That is a golden chanterelle, huh? Let's, let's get his friends. Oh, man. One right here. Are you kidding me? Look at these chanterelles. And this one right here. This one right here. I mean, these are like flowers of the forest. Look at this bouquet. There you go. I love you. That'd be a nice bouquet, huh? This is mushrooming in the Northwest in November. So, loving it. Man, it's always exciting finding mushrooms beautiful like this. That's awesome. So, if you didn't think your golden chanterelles were up, here they are. Oh, they're out. There we go. stickers in here so oh but that's a beauty there you go nice nice we're working for these a little but you, know, you get in here in the brush, this is when you're going to find the good chanterelles. <laughs> it takes a little effort sometimes, but we're getting them. And I'm still super dry, thanks to my Helly Hansen rain gear. Come on, Helly Hansen, give me that sponsorship. Let's go. Ow. <laughs> All right. Let me out of here. There we go. Whew. Yeah, boy. Sometimes you gotta get in there to get them mushrooms, you know. But we're getting them. We're getting a nice basket of chanterelles. It's a really gratifying feeling, you know. There's like a little shot of dopamine or something whenever you find a mushroom that you're looking for. It's that same thing you got when you were a kid and you were uh, Easter egg hunting, you know, and you found the golden egg. Woo! But today we're finding the golden mushrooms, which is. Just as exciting, I think. Oh man, look what we see right here. So we do see a chanterelle, but not a golden chanterelle. These guys are known as yellowfoot chanterelles or winter chanterelles. You see that? This little guy popping out right here. You can see why they call it a yellow foot. It's kind of more uh, kind of a rusty brown kind of gold color on the cap, but it gets really bright yellow at the base. A couple more little guys down here, but I'm seeing a nice flush of them starting to pop up. There's more back there. So these Craterellus tubeformis or your winter chanterelle. Look at the gills on those. These are beautiful. Some of my favorite edibles. These are some of my favorite wild mushrooms to find, and they're starting to pop up right now too. So, But these are pretty easy to identify too. Also very golden, decurrent gills. Totally different genus though. Not even related to the big golden chanterelles, but the winter chanterelles, some of my favorite edible wild mushrooms. Craterellus tubeformis.
So the chanterelles really love the Douglas fir. If you can find a stand of Douglas fir that's about two feet around or you know, 40 or 50 years old, it's the kind of forest that chanterelles really like. Check this one out. It's different, isn't it? It's not gold like the other ones. This one's a white chanterelle, so a different species, still in the genus Cantharellus. This one, Cantharellus subalbidus. So, same distinguishing features, really decurrent veins. But this one's very pale. It's got a little bit of pigmentation, and when they get dry, they can like kind of stain orange colored, which can be a little confusing when you find these in the summer, but. Often these are full of dirt and debris and all kinds of nastiness, but this is a primo white chanterelle. So some people actually prefer white chanterelle, but this is a beautiful example of Cantharella subalbidus. The white chanterelle would be nice to find more that are in this good a shape. Beautiful. Oh gosh, look right here on the side of the trail. So this is what it's like right now in the Northwest. See all these? Beautiful patch of Cantharellus formosus, the golden Pacific chanterelle. There's more back there and there. Look at these, these truly are like flowers. Look at that. There's actually been studies done in Oregon where they tested plucking versus cutting of a chanterelle patch and after like a 10 year study, they concluded that the plucked patch was actually creating more fruiting bodies. But the areas that were heavily trampled had a decrease in fruiting body production. So picking the mushrooms like I'm doing is not harmful to the mycelium at all. But trampling on these patches potentially could be. Wow, what a beautiful patch of chanterelles just right on the side of the trail. All right, so our bag's starting to get pretty dang heavy. I carry an extra bag too, just in case. Look at that, another beautiful white Cantharellus subalbidus. The white chanterelle, never been more picturesque than this. You know, the more you're out here and the more chanterelles that you find, the better you will be able to identify the habitat where these like to grow so that you can find more in the future. This comes from experience, which comes from practice. And a lot of that experience looks like failure. Being out in the woods that aren't home to chanterelles. And that's important to know too. You'll start to register all this in your brain and then you'll know which forests to avoid and which ones to go into. Whoa, I came across a huge patch of the Cortinaria smithii. Look at all of these. These are the ones with the red gills. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Usually you don't find more than just a couple of these together, but to find this many is amazing. And I know somebody who does mushroom dyeing who will be very excited to know that I came into a bunch of Cortinaria smithii. How awesome. Yellow stipe, red, red, red under the cap. Rusty brown colored spore print. And uh, these are mycorrhizal growing with the trees. Whoa, there's more over here. Look at these. Wow, that's a beauty. That is a beauty and a half. Look at this. Whoa, that's so cool. There's a bunch back in there. I super scored on this patch. So I'm gonna harvest these. I'm 
when you get to a spot like this, sometimes it's a good idea to like do a little survey because you got a good view. You can see quite a ways around you. Take a scan and look for anything that's catching your eye. I think something just caught my eye right here. What? Dude, I couldn't have planned that. Look at this beauty. Oh man, this is a this is a picture perfect chanterelle. I think, yeah, I'm gonna take a picture of this really quick. All right. Dang, this thing's got a big base on it. Look at this beast. Kidding me? <laughs> Yeah, we've been saying it's been a bad year for Chantrell as well. Not anymore. All right, so me and Gunner are just walking up this hillside. This forest, it's got a lot of low brush, which can make it tough to forage. But alongside trails, you know, you can often find interesting mushrooms, even good edible mushrooms. Here's a mushroom right here. And, uh... Not one that's considered generally edible. This one, known as the elfin saddle. So it looks kind of like a saddle that an elf might ride on. You see that? It's okay to pick mushrooms. You gotta pick mushrooms to look at them and ID them. I'm actually helping it by spreading more spores into the wind like this. But look at this stem. We call it a stipe in mushroom language. And it comes up to this thing. Helvella vespertina. There's a little bug on here like in this mushroom, no doubt getting covered in spores and helping it to carry spores onto my hand. But uh, Helvella, what a cool name. I've always thought that sounds like an evil Disney princess or something like that, Helvella Vespertina. Such a cool name, but um, these are an ascomite, so they're a bit like a morel in that they don't look like a traditional mushroom. They don't have the gills underneath or even a sponge surface. They really produce spores all over this cap in something um, called ASCII, which is a little tube that produces spores and they actually eject the spores. And when these dry out a little, you can just pick one up or just barely move it and you'll see a cloud of spores come off of it. But this one, a good one to avoid, leave behind. Helvella vespertina. Oh, Gunner's pointing out some, uh, some russula, some kind of purplish russula. So these could be um, the shrimp mushroom, or related to the shrimp mushroom for sure. These, the genus Russula, you know, if you break the stem, it just snaps like that, like chalk. Um, and they're also kind of fun to throw at a tree. Gosh, I'm going to try this. It's probably not going to go well. Yeah, there we go. It shatters. It doesn't bounce off the tree. So they're called brittle gills because the gills on these, this one's kind of old, I'll just flip it over, but, but uh, well, it's mushy and wet right now, but the gills, you could just flake them apart when they're dry. But some of these are okay edibles. These ones are probably uh, Russula zerampolina, or the, uh, or the shrimp russula, or the shrimp mushroom. And you could take a little nibble off the edge of the cap of this genus of mushrooms, of russulas. You can take a little nibble of the edge of the cap, and if it's really spicy and peppery, then it should be one that you avoid eating. And if it's mild, it's totally safe to eat. None of these are like deadly toxic. They might just give you an upset stomach if they're really spicy and acrid and you insist on eating them. But um, yeah, these are a you know, pretty really common genus of mushrooms. You see them on the side of the trail everywhere just popping up. Really nice, pretty purple. Some of them are red, some violet, some pink, uh, some purple, just like these. Here's another purple mushroom. These ones are super photogenic. I see one right here. So this one called Lacaria amethesto. Wait, these ones are kind of tan on top, purple on the bottom. So I think these ones are called Lacaria bicolor. Look at how beautiful that is, wow. So Lacaria bicolor, kind of brown on top and, uh, and kind of purple, definitely uh, amethyst purple on the bottom. Gunner's a great helper out here. He's still going strong, all you Gunner lovers. He's he's doing just wonderfully, and uh, he loves mushroom season. Loves being out here in the woods so much. There you go, Lacaria bicolor. These are edible too, the Lacaria deceivers. 
they call them a deceiver because they come in so many different sizes and kind of like shapes that it confuses people as to what they really are. But uh, Lacaria, growing right by the Russula, growing right by the Helvella. Stop here to get a little shot of Gunner. I noticed this little white coloration coming out of the bottom of the hill right here. Let me pop this out of here. Look at that. Oh, hello, buddy. This is a Matsutake. That's a nice little surprise. Just as I stop to do something else, that's when I notice it. A number one button. This is Tricholoma Mirialanum, the Western Matsutake. So, really highly prized in Japan. And even here, it's one of the, you know, best wild edible mushrooms you can find. And it's got this really pungent odor that once you smell it, you won't forget the smell of a matsutake. Yeah, it's got this kind of spicy, sort of cinnamony kind of sweet smell that just smells really, actually really good. And uh, always really fun to find these. Love to find matsutake. These fetch a huge price tag in the market, way more than chanterelles because they're a lot more rare. But sometimes when you just stop to take a picture, you'll notice a little peak of that whitish color sticking out. And if you carefully unearth it, you'll find that it's a little mushroom like this. Matsutake. Oh, so this is unexpected. Walking by this bench, I see two pretty distinct mushrooms growing out of the hillside right here. This one, a red-capped Lexinum. See that? See the scabers on the stalk? These like kind of furry, furry little bits. That's indicative of Lexinum. Look at this one. Creamy, spongy surface underneath. This one's young and fresh. Look at that guy. Yeah, super viscid, just slimy with, you know, the water on it. Beautiful mushroom. A type of bolete. That's a huge lexinum. And this guy right here, this is your one of your false chanterelles, the woolly chanterelle or the scaly vase. This guy, Turbinellus flocosus, or the bed chanterelle, some people call it, because it's known to give gastrointestinal distress. Although they'll eat these in Mexico, I'm not sure if they have tougher guts or if they cook them longer or what's going on. Maybe a different species. But uh, two <laughs> cool mushrooms. Two that you should avoid. You should probably avoid both of these. As far as eating, they are known to cause upset in some people. But interesting to find them growing right next to each other. The Lexinum. I'm not sure of the species. Lexinum. Uh, I don't know. Associating with conifer. Maybe a ponderosum. And then this one, Turbinellus flocosus. Or the scaly vase chanterelle. Okay, These beauties right here are known as Hyphaloma dispersum or the dispersed Hyphaloma related to your sulfur tuft or conifer tuft, but this one probably toxic. And look at that really cool snakeskin pattern on the stipes make these some of my favorite to find and photograph beautiful beautiful mushrooms growing on wood white rot decayers and these are pretty big ones you see my hand next to it there's a couple really large ones that's a big hyphaloma dispersum Ugh. nice little setup for a good photograph of hyphaloma dispersum All right, so we got the chanterelles home on the counter. I use a little fan when it's really rainy out. I dry them off with this fan first. I'll let them sit for like an hour. And then they, they really start getting a lot drier. And now I'm able to use this little brush um, to just brush the fur needles and stuff off. I cut off the gross looking end. And then I process them. I kind of will like big ones that are all uh, ruffled like this and kind of hard to get in the crevices of, I'll carefully just cut it in half. Uh, you know, one big ones like this that are really contorted, cut it in half and the really, really mushy and dark colored bits, I kind of cut those off and just really try to clean them up so that they're ap you know, appetizing and clean and nice looking. You know, some of these are, are just big chanterelles that are kind of torn in half and I, cut the ugly parts off 
but uh, you know they're really nice like this and here's some other matsutakis that I'm kind of processing so a lot of mushrooms going on here's that matsutake we found on this walk and um, all those cortinarias these I just want to dry them out a little bit and then I'm going to call the lady who does all the mushroom dyeing and see if uh, they're better wet or if I should put them in the dehydrator but those were a cool score but anyways this takes a little while I just use a steak knife to kind of cut the butts and the ends off you know some people would still like to use these chunks I feel like I got enough here that I can be a little bit picky and just really have really choice chanterelles you know and we're gonna package them up we trade some for some farm fresh eggs and also give some to my mom she likes to can them and make soup and uh, just eat them on a steak or whatever so processing mushrooms can be a lot of fun all the it's starting to really dry out so now all these little Douglas fir needles are blowing all over the floor so the wife gets a little annoyed when I'm destroying the kitchen like this processing mushrooms but uh, I make sure to try to get it all cleaned up before I get in anyone's way but anyways this is how we clean up the chanterelles and then I store them typically in brown paper bags you can get those little trays I don't have any right now but little trays uh, that you know would be like street food you know they'd serve like french fries or something in. and then you can slide that in a brown paper bag really nice way to store these and in the back of your fridge they can last for a long time they can last for a couple weeks if they stay cold same as matsutake these mushrooms have a really good shelf life so uh, yeah just uh, clean your mushrooms well treat them nice and gently and uh, and make them attractive so that uh, so that they don't look like this you know this guy might not make the cut I don't know, no, that's probably fine. Just uh, that brush goes a long ways cleaning these up, but I just wanna get them nice and clean. So the work continues after you get out of the woods. I would love to do a catch and cook video, but I have a bad reaction with chanterelles. They really upset my stomach. And so really these kind of go out as gift baskets and I hook up my friends and my family and stuff like that. So um, you're gonna have to watch a different video to see how to really cook chanterelles because I can't really honestly judge my cooking if they're gonna make me sick after I eat them. But anyways, thanks for joining this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. It's chanterelle fever going on, chanterelles growing like crazy out here in the woods right now. So if you've been discouraged up to this point, I think now is the time to get out there. Your chanterelles are popping. I'm happy to report that to you. So thanks for joining this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. We'll see you on the next one. Much love everyone.